In ancient Greece, there was a deity named Aphroditus or Aphroditos who was originally from Amathus on Cyprus. What made Aphroditus unique was his androgynous appearance, which fascinated the people of Athens where he was celebrated. The god was depicted with a female shape and clothing like Aphrodite's but also with a phallus, hence his male name. What's interesting is that Aphroditus arrived in Athens from Cyprus during the 4th century BC, but during the 5th century BC, there were already Hermae of Aphroditus that existed. These were phallic statues with a female head. According to Greek mythology, Hermaphroditos was the son of Aphrodite and Hermes, and he appeared in the characters of Theophrastus. Photius also explained that Aphroditus was Hermaphroditos and cited fragments from Attic comedies mentioning the divinity. Excavations at the Athenian Agora, marketplace, uncovered one of the oldest surviving images of Aphroditus. The fragment of a clay mold for a terracotta figurine depicts a female lifting her dress to reveal male genitals. This gesture was believed to have apotropaic qualities, averting evil influences and bestowing good luck. Because Aphroditus embodies both male and female characteristics and is associated with both the moon and fertilizing powers, the mythological figure is regarded as having influence over the entire animal and vegetable creation. In ancient Greece, the worship of the moon god was a popular tradition among the people. In honor of this deity, men and women would come together to perform sacred rituals that celebrated the unity of male and female energies. During these rituals, men and women would exchange clothing, symbolizing the fluidity and unity of gender in the worship of the moon god. This practice was held in high regard by the followers of the deity and was considered an important aspect of their religious practices. The festivals dedicated to the moon god were also important occasions for the followers of the deity. During these celebrations, women would dress in clothing of the opposite gender and act as men, joining the large train of followers who dedicated themselves to this god. The moon god was revered for embodying the unity of yin and yang and was seen as a powerful reminder to the people that they should not be confined by societal norms when it came to expressing their true selves. The moon god's followers embraced fluidity and openness when it came to gender, and their example serves as an inspiration even today. In conclusion, the worship of the moon god in ancient Greece was a testament to the fluidity and unity of gender in human expression. By respecting and celebrating the interchangeability of male and female energies, the followers of the moon god were able to embrace their true selves and live in harmony with the world around them. Do you want to explore more Greek mythology stories? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.